The rise to seek your indulgence on a matter, Mr. Speaker, that is of importance, Mr. Speaker, very high importance, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Parliament has been under attack, Mr. Speaker, for quite some time now. From certain quarters, Mr. Speaker, the religious leaders and other groups, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we are not here by accident. We are not members of Parliament by accident, Mr. Speaker. We were elected by the people of Kenya, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, some of the positions that are sought after in this country, Mr. Speaker, is to, member of, to be a member of Parliament. Every, including religious leaders, contest for these positions, Mr. Speaker. During the elections, every constituency has a minimum of 10 to 15 aspirants, Mr. Speaker. Minimum. Some more, 20, 30. There is one in Kisi that had 45 <laughs> candidates. You can see, Mr. Yes. Speaker, you are, you are right. One in Kisi had 45. But, Mr. Speaker, you cannot bastardize a position that has been given by the Constitution and people donating their sovereignty to them, Mr. Speaker, and you say that Parliament is useless, Parliament is captured, Parliament is this and that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, just now, this afternoon, this sitting where we are today, we have just passed almost five bills, Mr. Speaker, that you read the third Very reading. important. Bill. Very important bills. Bills on higher education, bills on finance, Public Finance Management Act. All those bills, Mr. Speaker, are being passed in this House to make the lives of the citizens of this country better, to help the governance of this country to make the things easier for the Kenyans so that they can get services from the executive, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I feel very, very bad when I see members taking, you know, parliament a joke. Mr. Speaker, parliament is a very sacred place. It's not a small place, Mr. Speaker. But if there is no parliament, there is no country. Because there is no taxation without parliament. Even the executive cannot collect any money, Mr. Speaker, without parliament. There is no democracy, as the KG has put it. Mr. Speaker, it has become now a fashion that people just stand on a queue, look for the media, and say, oh, parliament has failed, parliament, without pinpointing and telling us what have we failed in. What is this that you expected of us that we have not done, Mr. Speaker? You know, you must hold people accountable with the facts. And not to generalize and just say, I have been in this parliament long enough. If you are not happy with other aspects of governance, don't throw it to parliament, Mr. Speaker. Yes. And, then, and then also, you cannot blame members of parliament who come from the ruling party while they are supporting their government. Yes. People have been elected on parties. Yes. People went to, to be elected on Kenya Kwanzaa, others went to be elected on Azimio, others went to ODM. Mr. Speaker, you cannot blame a member of parliament from the ruling party, why is he supporting his government? He made a decision in 2022 to run on that party and to support that government. Mr. Speaker, we, this is the place we need to speak. If the church can speak in the church, we will also speak in parliament. No, that's the truth of the matter. We are going to speak here. Everybody has a mouth to say and everybody has a forum to talk. If there's no mutual respect, you must, leadership must be respected. We are, we are speaking on behalf of people. Every member of parliament here has been given mandate by people. Nobody is here invited. Nobody has come here under the invitation of anyone here. Everyone has been elected. Some of the members here, like the women reps, have come here with over 400,000 votes. They are not, they are, it's not a joke, Mr. Speaker. People don't know how difficult it is to convince 400,000 people to vote for you. People don't know that, Mr. Speaker. People don't know how difficult it is to wake up people at 5 a.m. in the morning to, to queue so that they can vote for you, Mr. Speaker. People don't know that. We respect our religious leaders. We respect them so much because we, they are the people who guide us spiritually. But Mr. Speaker, politics is different from religion. Completely different. If, if you think there is an issue that you are not happy with. As a leader of another sector, a religious leader, or even uh, whichever leadership you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you have, 
address members of parliament with dignity and decorum. Don't belittle them. Don't make it as though they are nobodies, Mr. Speaker. These are serious people who are passing laws in this house. Laws that are going to be used to govern you, you, you yourself, who are attacking them on, on TV. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to, to ask members here to stand up for their rights. The only institution that does not have a union is parliament. Other institutions are defended by the unions, Mr. Speaker. We have now to become 416 union members here. And Mr. Speaker, especially people like attacking the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, this National Assembly has passed under your leadership for the last two years over 100 bills which have been assented to by the President, which have become laws which are helping the country. So, Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I want to say, let us rise up for our rights. We are not going to, to, to now, see, we are not going to accept this now lying down. We are going to stand up for our rights and we are going to become the union leaders as the minority leader, as the majority leader. We, now we are going to become union leaders of parliament, Mr. Speaker. And we will defend because institutions of governance must be respected. And parliament is one of those institutions. Parliament has been created by the constitution. So if we don't respect our institutions, what are we, how do we respect the mosque? How do we respect the church? If we're not respecting the institution that is used for governance. With those, few, with those few remarks, Mr. Speaker, I want to urge people outside there to be respectful. Otherwise, you will know why chicken doesn't have milk. Thank you very much. Honorable members, uh, I will uh, allow you, but I also want to point out the leadership of this house, including majority leader, Junette, my able deputy, the whips, the chairman and chairpersons of committees, we assembled in Naivasha for a meeting, a round table meeting with Kepsa, and a meeting of leadership. And one newspaper with wide circulation, two days ago, had a screaming headline that the Speaker of the National Assembly had said that members were stealing money from their bodyguards.